heaviest load ever transported on a New Zealand highway is a new 48-ton synchronous condenser stator, recently landed at Wellington from England for the State Hydroelectric Department. It will be installed at Bunnythorpe, and the first half of the trip from Wellington had to be done by trailer, as the stator is too large to go through a railway tunnel. The trailer, which weighs another 27 and a half tons, was also imported from England and has its own hydraulic system and controls. A telephone circuit links the trailer with the two public works trucks, one of which is pushing and one pulling. And radio-equipped patrol cars of the transport department control the traffic and keep the roads clear ahead. At the Parramatta Bridge, scientists of the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research take the opportunity to gather some valuable information on the behaviour of the bridge under a heavy load. At Pukaroa Bay, a diversion is made to avoid using an overhead railway bridge which might not stand the 76 tonnes of the stator and trailer. It proves to be a tight corner and the trailer's hydraulic jacking system is brought into use to help out. wheels are jacked up off the ground and then swung to the required angle for the next move. It's a slow process, but in this case it's the only way around the sharp corner. And away again the unit rolls down to Paikakariki where it will be loaded onto a train. At 76 tonnes, it's a record weight for New Zealand roads and a successful combined operation by the Hydro Department, the Public Works and the Transport Department. In a mill at Whanganui, wool is being manufactured into cloth for the home and overseas market. After being sorted by hand, the raw wool goes into the scouring machine. By the time all the dirt has been soaked out, a 40% dead loss in weight will have taken place. In this case, the wool is being dyed in the fleece. Dyeing in the piece or in the yarn are methods also used. Several of the workers who came out from Galashiel, Scotland, to found the mill in 1923 are still on the job. After the wool leaves the man's hands, three completely automatic carding machines take over. The yarn comes out at the other end in the form of rovings. These are placed on this machine, a spinning mule, which winds the yarn onto the bobbins. A fresh supply of bobbins is brought into the big room where the looms are in operation. The looms have to be kept constantly supplied or the weaving would have to stop until the other processes could catch up. The yarn comes over the loom in the form of the weft or width of the cloth. The shuttle containing the bobbin is fired from one side of the loom to the other. The cross strands of yarn make up the warp. Here, knitting yarn is being washed. While over here, completed cloth is being stretched as a safeguard against future shrinkage. The final stage is drying and pressing, and then the cloth can be wound into bolts for dispatch to ready buyers. Velours, scotch tweeds, blankets, rugs and knitting yarn are amongst the many types of high-grade material produced at this mill, constituting another important Whanganui industry. From a New Zealander in China comes this clip of an interesting festival held annually at the little township of Kong Twen, where a New Zealand Presbyterian mission is situated. For days, thousands of visitors have been pouring in by all available means to watch the proceedings. The scene is faintly reminiscent of the Narawahe Regatta. The occasion commemorates a respected sage who was drowned here in ancient times. 
Every year another search is made for his body and rice cakes are thrown into the water to sustain his spirit. The puffs of smoke are from firecrackers. After the ceremony, the boats will be buried in the river mud until next year, when they'll be dug up and repainted for the festival. Even in these troubled times, unfortunate China still has the heart to keep alive her traditional ceremonies. Church, Laurie Peterson in white shorts meets Ian Cruikshank wearing black in an open-air welterweight contest. Peterson is the Queensland champion and contender for the Australian title. Cruikshank is the New Zealand title holder. Both men weigh 10 stone, 3.5 pounds. They box cautiously at first and there's a good deal of clinching. Sometimes it looks more like a wrestling match till you get a closer view. Both men are rocking in hard body jams. <laughs> At the end of the round, both boxers are breathing hard, but Peterson's more muscular body is taking the punishment easily. Peterson wraps a neat right to Crookshank's head and catches him off balance, but he's up again. Then Peterson sinks a hard left to the solar plexus. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Crookshank beats the count of ten and gamely, though a little groggily fights on for the rest of the round. Peterson holds his advantage and keeps Crookshank up against the ropes. Peterson has the best of things and keeps Crookshank moving round, facing both left and right punches without much trouble. Peterson fights in the southpaw style as opposed to Crookshank's more orthodox boxing. Last round, Crookshank forces the pace, attempting to gain some points and find an opening in his opponent's defences. But Peterson's quick eye and longer experience in the ring proved too much for the New Zealander. It's been a clean, hard match, and Peterson has made a decisive win on points.